All right, what else would I be doing on Boxing Day besides out shopping? Since we can't do it this year in Ontario, I figured I'd throw out another video for you. So this video today, we're gonna to be talking about Canada's chances in the World Juniors. And that road's gonna start and stop with Russia and how Canada manages Yaroslav Askarov. So going into this tournament, like it is every year, you gotta fight through injuries. We've already lost one of our top players in Kirby Dodge, but we also could have injuries as this tournament progresses. A lot of the Canadian team hasn't been on the ice playing in game conditions, and that's gonna lead itself to potentially more injuries. So how well we're gonna do in the tournament is also gonna be dependent on how we can manage our injuries. Another element going into this tournament is how our goaltender handles the pressure and can he stay hot, can he stay not injured. So in our case, Devin Levy, He's a guy that's going to likely carry the ball for the team. But there's got to be an ability for our guys to step up with a backup goalie if he has a bad game or if they need to rest him. So the, so the Garand or Gauthier kid need to be able to step in at a moment's notice and carry the ball for Canada if needed. So the goaltending portion is where it always falls or rises with Canada. Is our guy going to be the Justin Pogge or is he going to be a guy that lets the ball drop and sort of shrinks in the moment? Right now, I'm confident I think Levi can run with it and take the ball and go through the whole tournament. Based on the exhibition games and based on the early games in this tournament, the number one threat to Canada's chance to win a gold is going to be Russia. All roads are going to lead through Russia. And their stud goalie, first round draft pick of the Nashville Predators, Yaroslav Askarov. He's six foot three, massive athletic goalie and today we're going to look at some clips from the exhibition games and from his first game in the world junior to see the strengths and weaknesses and at the end of this video i'm going to give you a detailed scouting report of how we can attack him and how we can bring home the gold all right let's take a look here at yaroslav he plays an rvh game he does get aggressive on loose pucks around the net and you'll see this little scrambling type of an approach quite often when you watch him play he takes care of the initial puck, pushes over to try to address the rebound, but he's out scrambling, looking for pucks and feet. When he plays Canada, you'll see this repeated several times. Here on a point shot, he's battling, looking through traffic, trying to find pucks, and he RVHs on the puck as it drops down to the side of the net. Solid play, he uses this big frame, there's nothing there. Here we got a slow developing play in the end zone. He does a decent job of looking off the puck, but his super strength is covering the low net. He's got a massively wide butterfly, and he can reach pucks way wide or way to the corners. Outstanding. Here's where he gets himself into problems. On the initial shot, and then he'll scramble around the net, he'll start over pursuing this guy at the side of the net. He doesn't need to be over on that guy, but he bounces back with a huge left pad save. The side net scrambling, over pursuing guys over here is a weakness that we can expose by moving the puck laterally on this kid. As this D zone situation develops, holds his edges, projects his blocker well, and like most goalies nowadays, can really handle pucks in tight in the bottom part of the net. He does move post to post exceedingly well in the RVH and he's a super athletic kid up and down. But one of his weaknesses that we gotta expose is denying access. He will let pucks get through his armpits. This puck he does see, he reacts, he tries to close down on it, but he doesn't pinch. And big goalies often allow pucks through them because the holes are bigger. Again, here's a classic example of the chaos where he over pursues. On the initial shot, he gets him out into traffic. He's got his own guy's stick pushing his helmet. And because of this over pursuit, he's down on his belly. And you don't cover a lot top shelf when you're in your belly, even when you're six foot three. Again, he tries to project the blocker and fill up space. But because he pushed himself out into traffic, he got himself into needless trouble. Here again, we see how well he fights through pucks through traffic. And he doesn't in this situation. Generally, he's pretty good, but this is another thing we've got to attack when we play him. He's big, he can see up and around shoulders, but if we get initial screens tight and mid-zone screens, we can really attack this. So we gotta have second and three layer screens to beat this guy.
All right, there you have it. There's some of the video that we have of him to this point, Mr. Askarov, and some areas of strength and areas we got to stay away from. So I wanted to summarize those in a bullet point form as a little scouting report like we do in the NHL on how you're going to beat Yaroslav Askarov. Number one, you have to understand, put pucks on net and don't get cute just because he's a first round pick. Put the pucks on the net, he'll let stuff through him. He's not an overly tidy rebound guy, so put pucks on the net and don't get cute. Yaroslav will allow pucks through him and he does struggle with denying puck access. So when you put these pucks on the net, you will be rewarded. He does tend to sell out, extend, and use his lanky frame to reach for pucks, which creates these holes. So again, putting the pucks on the net, there's a good chance of either a greasy rebound or getting stuff through him. Don't get too cute, just pump them on the net. Yaroslav is a super athletic, dominant goaltender. He's huge, and that's why he was drafted in the first round. But bear in mind, that aggressiveness comes with a price. He doesn't have a calmness. He doesn't have a, a chaos control meter. So when scrambles happen, when scrambles break out, he'll be reaching and extending and pushing gloves over pucks way out of position in many cases. So in any chaos situations in front of the net, don't shovel the puck right back into him. Move that puck laterally. And Canada will be looking at a lot of empty nets the whole night if they can do that in the scramble situations. So at the end of the day, yeah, he's a stud. Yeah, he's going to be a great goaltender in the NHL. But right now, he hasn't calmed his game. He hasn't developed the poise of a carry price. So Canada, let's put pucks on net. Let's battle for rebounds. And let's push those controlled chaos rebounds out of the way to the side so we're tapping in empty nets. We're going to do this against Russia if we follow these simple scouting tips and let our talent take over as the greatest hockey country in the world, right? Mm -hmm.